Hello, welcome to the Mark Janad Show, the cybersecurity show. So in this video, I'm going to begin with giving you an overview of Hitachi Ventura. Next, I'm going to discuss the Akira ransomware. After that, I will discuss how the Akira ransomware took down Hitachi Ventura servers. I will then discuss how the Akira ransomware works, like a, a breakdown of it and how it was able to gain access to the server. And I'm going to finalize this video with what Hitachi Ventura can do to protect its servers from ransomware moving forward. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We are going dark. So Hitachi Ventura, right? Uh, it, it's basically a wholly owned subsidiary of Hitachi, uh, specializing in data infrastructure, intelligent data management, and AI-powered hybrid cloud solutions for enterprises and mid-sized organizations, right? It's headquartered in Santa Clara, California. So Hitachi Ventura serves as the data backbone for mission-critical operations, empowering businesses, including the majority of you know, the Fortune 100 to innovate, scale it, and unlock value from their data. Now, the company's offering span, enterprise data storage and management, hybrid and cloud infrastructure, artificial intelligence and analytics, data protection and security, software for machine learning and IoT via the, Lumi, you know, the Lumata platform. You know, there's the integrated and converged systems for digital transformation. Now, in regards to the Acura ransomware overview, so it's basically a malicious software strain that first emerged in March 2023 and has rapidly become a significant threat to organizations worldwide. It targets both Windows and Linux systems and is notable for its sophisticated double extortion tactics and high ransom demands. Now, some of the key characteristics of it is it has the ransomware as a service, right? Akira operates as a RAS, ransomware as a service, meaning the core group provides the ransomware to affiliates who carry out attacks in exchange for a share of the ransom payments. There's the double extortion. So attackers not only encrypt victims files, but also exfiltrate sensitive data threatening to publish it if their ransomware, you know, or if the ransom demands are not met. You know, Akira primarily targets large enterprises in North America. Uh, they're kind of on brand here, right? Uh, Europe and Australia, affecting industries such as education, finance, manufacturing, and healthcare. So ransom demands can reach into the hundreds of millions of dollars with total estimated earnings exceeding 42 million. So the way, so let's get into this story, right? Because let's merge the two. So Again, Hitachi Ventura is a major data infrastructure and cloud solutions provider and subsidiary of Hitachi, right? It suffered a significant ransomware attack attributed to the Akira ransomware group, right? The company was forced to take several servers offline to contain the incident, disrupting internal systems, manufacturing operations, and support services. So the scope the attack affected Hitachi Ventura's internal systems and manufacturing environments. However, the company's cloud services remain uninfected and customers with self-hosted environments retain access to their data. Hitachi Ventura serves a broad range of high-profile clients. You want to know who they are? BMW, T-Mobile, and China Telecom, right? And, you know, government entities. So the sources indicate that the Akira group exfiltrated files from Hitachi Ventura's network and left ransom notes on compromised systems. So the attack reportedly impacted multiple projects owned by government organizations. So upon detecting suspicious activity, Hitachi Ventura immediately activated its incident response protocols engaged external cybersecurity experts and proactively took servers offline to contain the threat. The company is working to restore systems and support affected customers as quickly as possible. Now let's get into a little bit of a more technical breakdown of how, uh, you know, the Akira's attack path on the Hitachi Ventura's servers. So we have number one, the initial access, right? The exploiting of vulnerabilities in Hitachi's Ventura software. So Akira has targeted vulnerabilities in Hitachi Ventura's Pentaho business analytics server specifically. It had the CVE 2022 43939, 
basically it's an authorization bypass vulnerability that allows attackers to craft non canonical, you know, URL paths, bypass authentication and gain unauthorized access to restricted resources. So this flaw affects Pentaho BHA server versions prior to 9.4.0.1 and 9.3.0.2. So we also have the CVE 2022 the 43769. This is a special element injection vulnerability allowing arbitrary command execution via spring template injection. Okay, so these vulnerabilities are actively exploited in the wild. Now, there are also the compromisation of the remote access services, right? So Akira frequently exploits weaknesses in VPNs without multi factor authentication often using known Cisco vulnerabilities, but the same tactics apply to any exposed remote service, right? So attackers may also target exposed remote desktop protocol endpoints or use stolen credentials obtained through phishing or previous breaches, right? The next thing is the privilege escalation and lateral movement. So we have credential harvesting. So after gaining initial access, secure actors use tools like Mimikatz and Lazang, Lazan, whatever you want to call that, to extract credentials from the local security authority subsystem service, the LSASS memory. They may create new domain or administrative accounts, like the IT admin, to uh, maintain persistence, right? There's the network reconnaissance, so tools such as advanced IP scanner and Soft perfect are used to discover additional systems and map the internal network. Now, the lateral movement, you know, Akira leverages SMB, RDP, and remote command execution tools like the M packets, you know, WMI exec to move laterally, you know, within the environment. The next, the next step is the data exfiltration and ransomware development. So, stolen data is exfiltrated using tools like FileZilla, RClone, WinSCP, or WinRAR, often to, you know, cloud storage or attacker-controlled servers. You have the ransomware execution, so the ransomware is deployed across compromised systems encrypting files and dropping ransom notes. So, uh, you know, Akira deletes volume shadow copies to prevent easy recovery, okay? So, that is, you know, Hitachi Ventura overview, the Akira ransomware overview, how it did it, you know, what it is, etc. But one of the most key things of this video of all, um, especially, is what could Hitachi Ventura do to protect its servers moving forward from this ever happening again? So there, what they can do, they can do things like the immutable snapshots and data retention. So Hitachi Ventura storage systems, such as VSP1, create immutable snapshots read only copies of data that cannot be altered or deleted by ransomware or malicious actors, right? So the data retention utility enforces policies that lock these snapshots for a defined period, you know, ensuring backups remain unchangeable and available for recovery. This approach enables organizations to quickly restore data to, you know, a clean pre-attack state, minimizing downtime and data loss. There is AI-powered ransomware de detection, so integration with Index Engine Cyber Defense provides AI-driven detection of ransomware activity. So this technology analyzes metadata and content at scale, detects corruption early, isolates threats and guides IT teams to the last known clean backup for rapid, precise recovery. There's CyberSense, you know, supports the NIST cybersecurity framework functions, including identification, protection, response, and recovery with forensic level reporting and audit trails. One of my favorite is the data isolation and air gapping technique. So, Hitachi Ventura supports data isolation, right? Isolation and air gap technologies, which physically or logically separate backup data from um, production environments. So this reduces the attack surface and prevents ransomware from accessing or encrypting backup copies. 
So solutions like Hitachi Content Platform, the HCP, and HCP Anywhere extended protection to endpoints and remote offices, ensuring comprehensive coverage beyond the data center. Now there's the centralized management and anomaly detection. So Hitachi Ops Center provides centralized, right? management across hybrid cloud and edge environments enabling visibility and control over data storage so it can identify you know basically anomalous behaviors such as an unusual io patterns which may signal a ransomware attack so they can do all these things for themselves right there's the automated processes and analytics help that you know they help detect mitigate and prevent ransomware threats proactively you know, encryption and secure storage. So robust encryption protects data and, you know, at rest and in transit, ensuring that even if data is accessed by unauthorized parties, it remains unreadable. There's the compliance oriented deletion, irretrievable shredding and secure storage practices that further enhance data security. There's rapid, you know, recovery and business continuity. So versioning and file rollback capabilities in HCP allow organizations to revert to the latest clean version of any file, even beyond the most recent backup, ensuring business continuity and minimizing productivity loss. So land speed access to cloud storage and seamless disaster recovery options ensure that operations can resume quickly after an incident. So that's what I have for you today. Please take a moment right now to hit that subscribe button and the like button. If you appreciate this video and you want more videos like this, let me know that by hitting that subscribe button and the like button. Stay safe and see you on the next video.